What's up, New England and beyond? Rochester, New York, and all of East Coast and beyond. What's up for the Room Podcast on a special, special occasion, talking with newly crowned Neff welterweight champion John Warhawk Piersma. What's up, brother? Congratulations, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> What's going on, man? It's been a couple of days removed from a huge, huge night of yours, bro. I know how we celebrated. We'll talk a little bit about that, but... A uh, couple of days removed from the fight, bro. How you feeling? How's the body? How's everything? Uh, good. I feel great. Um, I actually just finished up training. I'm actually at the gym right now. Um, but yeah, good. I uh, you know, took you know Monday off, but um, good. No injuries. No, nothing's bothering me. So it's right back to it. First five round fight. Uh, man, went the whole twenty five minutes, bro. Grueling, grueling matchup. And uh, grueling fight, bro. How'd you feel about the fight? Um, you know, we'll talk about the other side and what was going on during the fight. But how'd you feel about your performance in there on Saturday night? Um, I'm happy with it. Um, I think it is good to, you know, be able to get that 25-minute experience. Um, I don't think many guys get that, get that experience this early in their career, um, to be able to go 25 minutes. Um, so I think that's a, that's a big plus. Um you know, not to know I can do that um, in the future. Um, uh, I mean, I would have liked to get a finish, obviously. Um, that would have been nice. Um, um, I should have, uh, you know, looking back, maybe uh, went for it a little more, been a little more aggressive when I was on top. Um, but uh, the big thing is uh, he kind of, he was content with staying down there and he was just content with surviving. He wasn't taking any chances. He just wanted to kind of control my wrists and uh, just survive and not get submitted. So it made it, uh, it kind of made it tough to really open up any submissions. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with my performance. I would like to get a finish, but um, a win's a win and uh, we'll take it. Well, we didn't see much, you know, Ryan's known as a striker and a grappler finishing on always. He didn't get a chance to really show his striking, but um, you know, in the little that we did see, man, it seemed that you were bobbing and weaving out of it. And uh, what were you, what were you seeing in there as far as his striking? Was there uh, anything that you were concerned about, or is it just waiting for your opportunity to go in for a takedown? Uh, no, I mean we knew that um, striking was gonna be was gonna give him a better chance in the fight. Um, you know, he didn't. You know, in the exchanges we had, he didn't throw anything. He didn't really hit me with any punches. I think he hit me with a couple light kicks. That was about it. Um, so we were we really weren't, weren't worried about striking with him, but um, at the end of the day we came to win. So uh, you know the takedown was there pretty easily. Um, I had a huge advantage in the grappling uh, department, so we figured why even mess around with the striking when you know I can easily dominate the fight um, another way. Well, taking on uh, probably the number one welterweight in New England, bro. Um, you dominated the fight in the way that you have dominated in the past. You didn't get the finish, but you did talk about, you know, how Ryan was content laying on his back and not giving you anything. It seemed like he was kind of just waiting it out uh, in case it, there was a stalemate, he could get another standing opportunity, or maybe make it to the end of the round where he could start off a fresh round on his feet. But it didn't seem yeah. that... Yeah, it didn't it, seem... Yeah, that's... The that's the base thing. Like everyone, uh, I mean, more so his people in the crowd were all upset. You know, I was just trying to hold him out in this and that, um, you know, going to the fight, he had, he had a, you know, big talk about, Oh, he submits black belts. He chokes black belts unconscious. Um, but, uh, when I take him down, all, all he wanted to do was survive because he knew he had no chance down there. Um, I thought as the fight would go, he would start to kind of take some chances to get up knowing that he was losing the fight by so much. So I figured, Submission would open up some more uh, ground and pound, devastating ground and pound would open up. But um, as soon as I would take him down, he just I think he just he just went into the mode of, all right, I'm just gonna do my best to survive and not give up a submission, and then try to start standing the next round. So yeah, it's it's tough to really you know because he's you know he's been around, he's a veteran. Um, so it's tough when someone their their whole goal is just not to get submitted and not lose. Uh, or not get finished, it, it's hard. There's, it's hard to get a submission. It's hard to really mount a lot of offense because um, that was his only goal. He didn't really try to get up 
Um, he wasn't taking any chances. Um, you know, so it is what it is. If he was okay with losing like that, then, you know, that's on him. Um, it was on him to, you know, at least try to do something. So it is what it is. Well, that was his 30th fight um, going after his 21st uh, victory, I do believe. That was, uh, I what, your seventh fight? Was that your seventh pro fight? Uh, yeah, seventh pro fight, yeah. So seventh pro fight. I mean, John, I mean, you're early in your career. You basically started uh, MMA uh, when, what, 21, 22 years old? You're 26 now. Uh, you yeah, know. about six, five or six years ago, yeah. All right, so, bro, I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of growth in you right here as far as, you know, your striking, catching up to your grappling. As far as this fight, um, what, what's the confidence level? I mean, you were in there, a guy with 30 freaking fights. He's knocking people out, submitting people. Uh, what's your confidence level coming into New England, into his backyard, and, and getting the win in there in a dominant fashion? Uh, yeah, I mean, going into the fight, I was very confident. I was never worried. I mean, we knew he was, he was a tough guy. We knew if I made a stupid mistake, you know, it can maybe open the door for him. But um, going to the fight, I knew that I was going to control where the fight went. I knew that once I took him down, he wasn't getting up. Um, so, yeah, I was very confident. I didn't really didn't see any way for him to win this fight. Um, you know, and I did exactly what I said. I told him as soon as I grabbed him, he knew he'd be fucked. And um, I think as soon as I grabbed him the first round, he knew he was fucked. So, um, yeah, we're very confident. It's a good win. It looks, uh, you know, a great win on paper uh, moving forward. Um, you know, but there's definitely stuff to work on, definitely stuff to get better at. And, uh, we're going to be fighting tougher guys going forward. Well, with that, uh, that said, what do you, what are you looking for as far as, you know, next fight early 2023? I know your management has to, uh, speak with, I would imagine a lot of promotions are coming calling right now. Um, but you know, once they sit down, what's, what's kind of your, uh, you know, your, your timeline here to get back in there? Yeah, um, like I said, I had no injuries. Uh, I'm right back in the gym. Um, we got some people fighting coming up in December, so kind of maybe focus on helping them get ready and just focus on training and working on things. Um, but, yeah, early early next year, maybe February time, um, I would like to you know, be able to go through the holidays without dieting because that would suck. Um, but, uh, yeah, probably, probably february or something like that. Um, and as far as promotions, um, I don't know. You can ask Lars about that. Well, you know, uh, what I just want to bring up there was a there was a promotion here, a big jujitsu promotion uh, that you know has been having uh, really big events. And I tagged uh, I tagged you guys in it. It's just maybe if you want to get work in between, they are yeah. in, they are in Connecticut, so it isn't. Uh, you know, I would imagine it isn't that huge of a haul. But you know, if you want to get work in there, uh, that is available. But my man, as far as, uh, you know, going to Maine, this was your first time. You had a lot of uh, family, friends, and, uh, you know, support make it there with you, bro. How'd you feel about that? And, uh, you know, after that, you know, that we'll get into the, the other side of the crowd during the fight and, and after. But, man, uh, how was the support? And talk about it for you. Uh, yeah, it's great. I always, you know, I mean, my... Last far is Mississippi, so no one really can go to that. That's pretty. That's pretty far. Um, but yeah, I got I got a lot of family, a lot of friends, a lot of support. Um, anytime I play in the Northeast, I always get you know a good crowd, even if it's a five or six hour drive for them. Um, so yeah, it was really nice. I think I had you know between twenty and thirty people there. Um, you know, which which was really nice. You know, being that far away. Um, but yeah, I have a great support system, great family, friends, and. Uh, a lot of people that support me and, and uh yeah it's always nice to have a nice little crowd especially going away in someone's backyard well dude uh i did run into a bunch of uh your family outside inside i there's too many the name they were just popping out of everywhere we went outside yeah. there is a picture that someone took um one of ryan's fans our friends actually took this picture. Someone from your crowd gave him the camera. Oh, did they? Uh, yeah, they were outside, and we were talking to the guy. He was uh, he was talking to your coach. Uh, oh, was he? Yeah, Casey. He was talking to him about, you know, he's a fan of Ryan's. He's from Hawaii, but he respects the shit out of you. It was a great fight. He, uh, you know, he, hats off. Hats off to you, too. I'm going to just throw that picture up there, but you did have a couple of fans out there. 
I can't yeah. say, I can't say you had any fans inside the place, but we'll talk about that in huh. a second. But I'm just gonna whip this picture out. So um, you know, I guess it's Mike, your coach, Casey, uh, or, yeah. or or Elvis over there. Um, I guess a couple of cousins, aunts, yeah, uh, training partners. Me and Lars hanging there. We get a, had to get our heads in there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. Um, as far as the stream, do you have any uh, idea who's tuned in there? You got friends all over the place, but you know, did you get calls or or messages like, "Dude, I watched you fight," or or are they waiting for uh, something to come up on YouTube? <laughs> uh, no, I think there was quite a few people who got the stream and watched it. Um, yeah, there was quite a lot of people who texted me, called me. Uh, I've seen at the gym, um, so yeah, I think quite a few people got the stream and watched it. So yeah, I had a lot of support back home too, also. Well, bro, as far as uh, Neff itself, the experience, uh, what, what's your thoughts on it? Hostile crowd, but as far as the promotion itself, how they treated you, how everything went that night, uh, what's your take on Neff? Uh, you are their welterweight champion, so uh, give your take on your experience there. Uh, yeah, the promotion treated me great. Um, uh, everything went smooth. Um, yeah, uh, the promotion. Yeah, the promotion fighting for them was nice. Uh, Matt, he was a good guy. Um, treated us well. Um, yeah, I have no complaints. Uh, they they treat us really well. Um, uh, the venue, the venue was interesting. That was an interesting place. Um, the ca the cage was tiny. I know everyone warned me that, but the, the cage was tiny. Um, and the venue was very small. It was yeah, it was interesting. Those the fans were like, literally like less than a foot as I, as I was on top of them in the cage there was people in the crowd basically a foot from the cage just yelling telling me i'm a pussy and fuck me and this and that well all right we'll get back to that but uh, i know there was some chatter between you and ryan ryan you didn't get the vibe that you expected from ryan you spoke about no, it i was i was expecting you know like from weigh-ins to the fight, I was expecting him, you know, to run his mouth and, you know, to be that guy, talk shit, you know, just, you know, just, just be that guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, he, in person, he was totally different. Like, at weigh-ins, uh, uh, he just, he put his hand out, shook my hand, said, how you doing? Um, never, never said anything. Um, during the fight, he didn't, didn't talk his shit. He, you know, he actually was, you know, complimenting me, you know, saying, oh, good round, you know, good hips, good pressure. Um, after the fight, you know, he was respectful and said, you know, good fight. Um, so yeah, he, I was actually surprised, he, you know, out, outside of all, you know, the shit talk he was doing before the fight, he was a decent guy. So yeah, he's, uh, you know, he sells a fight and he's already selling his next fight, bro. He's fighting in February. He said, uh, you know, he's already talking, you know, talk, he's not talking mad yeah. shit, but he had to throw a little jab out there about your fight. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of chatter going on right now on Instagram. I saw a battle. One of your buddies or one of your friends is going after his friends on a feed I put up on our page. Where, yeah, it's, where is that at? Um, when I posted uh, your fight, what would you think about this uh, grappler against striker grappler? It's uh, on, yeah, it's on the Instagram page. Go check it out. So there's a, there's a feed. <laughs> there's a little back and forth going right right now there. So it's pretty cool. If anyone, you know, follow New England MMA uh on uh, Mick, on everywhere, but on Instagram, so there's good stuff going on there, bro. Um, yeah. But man, as far as uh, that crowd, it was all over you. I know you're in a fight, so you couldn't hear everything. I mean, when the, you're at the cage, but you know your corner, the upper balcony is like right above them. Like I was waiting, yeah. for, I was waiting for like fucking shoes to be thrown. They were, they, I mean, I know or, or Elvis was like looking up, like they were swearing <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, they were swearing for him during the fight. <laughs> but you expected it, right? Is this something that you, is this the first time you fought in, a, in front of a crowd like this? Like this hot, like this that hated you that much? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I fought, I fought a couple times against like at guys' hometown, so they had a lot of crowd, but I think the difference was like, Normally you'll have the cage and then you'll have the V. Oh, I lost him for a second. He'll be back. And they're, you know, away from the crowds or away from the cage. So you can't really hear them in the fight. But with this place, 
the general admission was like right cage side. So <laughs> as I was fighting and I would look up and there was a guy a foot from my face because they, when they were standing there about eye level with me on the ground, there was four or five guys a foot from the cage, just you, you saying I'm a pussy, <laughs> like fight like a man, like you're a bitch, like flipping me off the whole nonstop in five rounds. And I was, by the end of the fight, I was just laughing. I was like talking to him like, just, yeah, it was it was funny. Well, I have uh, I think his I, coach was talking shit to me too. And, yeah, and I was, I have a little clip. I'm showing right now. You're going up to the cage yelling or swearing at someone. I knew, it. and then or Elvis, Elvis does his little Cuban <laughs> Cuban penis move there with the. <laughs> yeah, after the fight, like, because I had to after you know winning the fight, you know, fifty forty four, and obviously they were up to that, and you know, listened to them for five rounds. I finally, you know, I. I gave it back to him a little bit. It was fun. I was having a good time. So, let, all right, let me ask you a question about that. 50-44. Someone gave you a 10-8 round. Is that how that gets scored? Yeah, so it was, I won every round, and then one, I think it, two judges gave me a 10-8 in one of the rounds. So, if everyone's saying, like, you know, his guys are saying you were laying on him or whatever, where, where does this 10-8 come from? I mean, you had to be doing some... Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have got a 10-8 by one of the judges if I just laid there and didn't do anything. I mean... I probably landed a hundred strikes throughout the fight. I mean, granted, I never got you know huge, devastating ground and pound, but throughout the whole fight, I I, helped, I hit him with quite a few really good elbows. Um, he was probably busted up a little bit. Um, I know for a fact I landed you know twelve to fifteen hard elbows throughout that fight from the top. Um, you know, and like I said, he he was more just trying to survive, control my wrist, so it made it tough to really just unload on him. But I throughout the course of the fight, I landed a lot of punches. I landed a lot of elbows. Um, and obviously the control time was probably 23 out of the 25 minutes. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, it doesn't get much more dominant than that. It just wasn't the, the style of fight that, you know, they found entertaining because their guy didn't have a chance in that kind of fight. Well, there you go. Well, John, a uh, couple of last things before I let you give you a shout out. If anyone wants to like show their face in there, but dude, we are uh, celebrated pretty cool afterwards you know it was hostile in that place but we came out there was no i mean we could have been sitting targets we were standing this yeah. someone could have someone could actually kind of i was kind of expecting that. i was telling like before we go up i was like all right if you're ready to hunt me outside for it. <laughs> dude i was ready Which for I think, uh, I think we would have been all right yeah i well i was ready for a pickup truck to come run us over from out of out of fucking anywhere but... that's true <laughs> but anyway Portland is a great fucking city, man. We went out after. We had a great time. You, uh, you, me, Lars, uh, a couple of your cousins. I think your brother hung out with us. I think I actually yeah. gave your brother a ride back to his hotel after. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember after a certain point, but I was dropping people off in the city everywhere on my way fucking back to the hotel. But, um... <laughs> But, dude, we went into, I don't remember the establishment, but we had a fucking ball. We, uh, we were buying shots for basically half the, half the bar. And we, yeah, yeah. and we watched UFC 281 on my illegal stream <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> like, everyone kept coming around, rotating. Uh, but it was a great night, dude. Uh, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. It was cool watching yeah, no, it was you. Cool. Portland, yeah, Portland Portland was a, was a cool city. Maine was cool. Yeah, it was cool hanging out with you, bro. It was cool, uh, you know, hanging with the, the trainer partners, all those guys. And uh, just, it was a big celebration of a night. And, uh, man, congratulations all around the team, the family, and uh, your future, bro. Uh, 2023 is looking fucking fabulous, man. Can't wait. Can't wait to get back to it. Uh, anyone out there want to stick their head in? Just, uh, or we, uh, we out of here. Everyone, everyone, I think everyone left and uh, went home. All right, my man. It's time. You got to mop the mats and you out of there. So, uh, yeah. yeah it's, being a champ is no joke, bro. So, <laughs> John, anything you want to say? Uh, shout outs. Anyone you want to say uh, thank you to? Uh, and I'll let you get out of here, bro. Yeah, just, uh, you know, shout out to everyone who's helped me through this camp. Um, teammates, coaches, friends, family. Um, all my sponsors that have been with me, uh, I posted I posted them up the other day. I tagged them all in there on my post. Um, yeah, all my sponsors, um, you know, you guys make this possible. And, um, yeah, just shout out to everyone who supported me to this point. And uh, we're going to get right back to it, and we're going to keep it rolling. And uh, it just gets uh, bigger and better things from here. Excellent. Well, John, last thing from me. Have you gotten any 
threats on your line? Anyone yelling at you or anything? Other like, have you gotten any like hate messages on your Facebook Messenger or anything? Uh, no, actually, I don't think so. That's fucking. I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if... <laughs> I don't know if that crew is smart enough to work that. Well, oh, my God. Well, here's one last thing I got to say before I let you go, bro, <laughs> is you are Neff's welterweight champion now, right? So yeah. you're going to go to the UFC. You are representing New England and in promotion now with a belt. So yeah. the, I think in a fight or two, you're going to have all fans that were hating your guts at um, – or, a, you know, on Saturday night. I'm telling you, they're, they're going to be riding it. If you get on the Contender Series, people are going to be licking your ass. I'm telling you that we're, like, <laughs> fucking calling you a douchebag before. Believe me. Yeah, I'll yeah, we'll probably change. We'll M see. Yeah, mock my words, bro. It's coming in 2023. Can't wait. All right, my man. John, thank you so much for the time, man. Uh, and a pleasure hanging out with you. And we'll see you real soon, my man. All right, I appreciate it. All right, bro. Take care. Well, there you go. Jonathan Piersma. All right, boys and girls. Excuse me. Um, that was kind of it. That was about all I had to say. Um, one, oh, one last thing I'm going to throw up here. Uh, that's why the screen is black. I just want to put up all... Um, uh, let me get that out of there. Let me get that out of there. I just want to put up... Um, if I find it here, wherever it is, did I find it? Did I find it? Um, I gotta find it first. Oh, there it is. Results. So these are the results from Nef 50 right here. So I'm going to let them flash for a little while for a couple of minutes in here. Um, and then we're, we're, we're getting out of here, but. That's about it, right here. Net 50 results. Uh, one last thing, let me go to Instagram while that's playing. And uh, I'll get to on Instagram because I do have a couple of clips here that I can uh, show from, um, from Saturday night. So, and it'll give you our Instagram um, stuff right here. So you can follow us at New England Mixed Martial Arts on uh, Instagram. So I'm going to let that play for um, about 20 more seconds. It has all the results. This came from um, this came from New England MMA.org and Travis Lazat and his live play-by-play -play from Saturday night. I just went out there and I took uh, some uh, screenshots of the decisions. But he has play-by-play, um, -play, everything written down. You want to go there, check it out. If you didn't watch the stream... And um, has everything in detail. So check it out, newenglandmma.org for Travis Lazat and his um, his results from Saturday night. So uh, last thing, let me put this back on, and uh, we'll get. Oh, I gotta shut that the fuck off. Uh, where is it? All right. So we're gonna get to um, some some clips from Saturday night because um, that's what I do. I take some clips and uh, we share them. So. First of all, let's get down here. Let's get to um, uh, let's get to the first finish. Oh, actually, let's get to this, which started off the show. This is gonna. So that's pretty cool. They um they were on for like ten minutes or so, ten to fifteen minutes, and they were playing all sorts of cool fucking shit. Um, and they actually had some uh. Some um some karate shit going on on the big screen while they were playing. It was really cool. I'm probably describing it like terrible, but um go check it out. I mean, go check out stream. I would say go buy Neff's fifty uh live stream. I would imagine you could buy the replay for probably half the price, 
a third of the price, two thirds of the price. I don't know. I would imagine, but I would go back and check it out. Uh, so this was the first finish right here. One of the finishes we caught right here. Lars, uh, Lars caught a lot of good shit here. Let me play that again. That was cool. That dude for, was from South Shore Sports Fighting. Their one and only fighter came in here and... Uh, So Lars took all this footage right here. Oh, not all of it. I took some of it. Um, Jonathan uh, Piersman's walkout. I don't want to play that because it has music. This was my fight of the night right here. Check this out. Check this shit out, people. Believe in your strikes, Danny. Believe in your strikes. Then he took an uppercut. But he hung in there. There he goes. Kicking. Kicking. Moving him. Moving him. Take him down. This kid was on the brink of the fight being stopped. And he came back. And he got a rear naked choke. Danny Wahlberg, man, you have my fight of the night, bro. You have my fight of the night, bro. Good for you. Good for fucking you. Um, so with that said, people, oh, and hats off to the other kid. I don't know his name. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, dude, you had that fight for, for about 30 seconds there. You had that fight. It's only amateurs. You two guys are fucking going to be something to uh, reckon with in the future. Holy shit. So with that said, I just wanted to show a couple of things after uh, John got out of here. I hope I didn't bore you. Uh, but with that said, I will be back tomorrow night with the CES 71 live fight companion with my buddy Kurt and Tommy Shehood. Shehood. In the house with me, drinking some beers, watching the card. I would like you to let you know there's only six MMA fights on this card. So it's going to be a short night. So we're going to have to drink fast. So with that said, tune in tomorrow. We're starting off around 8 o'clock. Live right here on YouTube with CES 71 Fight Companion. With that said, thank you so much, John Piersma and uh, everyone out there. See you tomorrow night.